Let's talk about how you can create your employee backup plan. This is a very important thing to have in business. Often it gets overlooked. My name is Ken Okel. I'm a professional speaker. I talk to audiences about ways you can improve your performance on the job. And I pull from a background that includes broadcast news, hurricane relief, and professional ballet. Now, I know, unusual combination, but in each and every field, I had to perform at a high level every day under pressure. In terms of having your backup plan, you need to have one because of the unexpected, those things that you don't see coming. An employee may be out of the office unexpectedly due to a family illness. They may be sick themselves or something else happens where they are just not able to be on the job for an extended period of time. You may not know when, if ever, they're gonna be able to come back. Very often, people's jobs are almost like silos where they are experts in their world, don't necessarily know so much of what other people do. So if you take one of these important people out of the mix all of a sudden, what happens to your organization? Very often, there can be problems, loss of productivity, frustration, things aren't getting done that should be, you're having to play catch up, lots of bad things. This is why I think it is really important to make sure you have a backup plan. Invest the time in doing so. Think of it like a form of insurance. So if that unexpected day comes, you're gonna be able to deal with it with confidence. First thing, you wanna identify backup. So go around your business, find people and see what they do. And if they do some really specific work, you need to make sure there is someone else in the organization who can cover for them. Very often, there may be two people who do similar jobs. Maybe they are each other's backups. Make sure all of this is identified. You don't wanna have one person be everyone's backup because if something happens to that one person and then someone else is out of the office, you're out of luck. Really make sure that you've identified who is the backup for these positions. Make it known, make sure people understand, hey, if this person's out, you're up. Important step to take. Then I think it's really important for people to go through their jobs and come up with the recipe for all of the important tasks that they do. These are the things that they do, they need to make sure that it continues if they're out of the office. So for instance, you go through your day and you may write down all the steps that you're doing. To do this process, I need to use this software, I need to contact this person, I need to make this request, or with billing, okay, these invoices need to be sent out this day, or we always pay this bill at this time. All of this recipe needs to be written down. And then there's the next step in all this, because a recipe is great, but you can't just have it be in your head. It needs to be accessible to people. Maybe you put it in some sort of binder, that is on the person's desk, in their desk. Here's the key though, it has to be easy to find. You may also wanna put it on the computer network. Not a bad idea, but again, make sure people can find it, that the updated version is obvious. You don't wanna have five different backup documents and you're not sure which is the newest one. So make sure the information is captured, it can be found easily, and it's just like that instruction manual that you're able to pick up and be like, okay, yeah, I know what to do. Moving on, you wanna have a time for the backups to meet, to go over this information. Because we learn in different ways, I very much like to walk through a process. I like to hear it, I like to see it, I imagine myself doing it. That's how I learn things. Now some people, they might be able to pick it all up from a manual, but I think it's good if the people can get together, walk through these processes, make sure they know how things work. Often a good time to schedule this, look at the calendar. When are those slower times during the year? Maybe it's before holidays, where the office is a little quieter, your business isn't as busy, that can be a great time to do this. Get the people together, have them go over everything so that you can feel confident moving ahead, that they have a backup and the backup is ready to step up. Also, think about the calendar. I believe it's really important to periodically, maybe twice a year, have a little refresher day. So you wanna put this on the calendar. Think of it almost like how you change the battery in your smoke alarm in your house. 
Some people do it when we change the clocks for daylight savings time. Some people do it at the beginning of the year and then in July. Pick a time where people will get back together to go over the processes because in that time, perhaps people are now using software or the software has been updated and it's a little different. Maybe it's an entirely new company. There may have been a password change. There's nothing more frustrating than having to do someone's job in a pressure pack situation and you can't even log in. These little refresher sessions, they don't have to last very long, but it just gives everyone an opportunity to go over the process again, just to make sure they have it. Trust me, this is a really important investment in time. You wanna make sure people know what to do, they're up on it and that they feel confident. Because sometimes when we have to perform, it's a stressful situation. Uh, just things just don't work out as well as you would like. Just take those few minutes, a couple times a year, go over the task. I do believe it's important when it comes to backups to have a certain degree of accountability. You have to decide on this level, but I think it's important that people understand that the performance of their backup is somewhat a reflection on them. If the backup just doesn't feel like they were prepared for the moment, then something is not good in that training process. Not everyone is good at training, I understand. And maybe some employees just aren't as enthusiastic about being a backup as you would like, but you really wanna make sure that people take this training process seriously. Make sure there's accountability for the person who's training the person and the person who is performing the job. You wanna make sure this is done right. Maybe this becomes part of a job performance review. You want your business to run smoothly. Also, if someone leaves the organization, it takes a little while to hire someone. So make sure during that hiring time and even once someone comes on board, there is time to make sure that there is proper backups in place. You don't want an unexpected thing to hurt your organization. A final thing to think about involves workloads because very often if someone is having to serve as a backup, they may be performing up to two jobs at once. Now, maybe they don't have to do everything that the other person does. We can do this often for a day or two, but over time, one or both of the jobs start to suffer. So if someone's going to be out for an extended period of time, you may have to adjust workloads, decide whether there are certain things that can just be pushed aside, done at a later time, hey, don't worry about them, or really say, okay, out of the two positions that you're doing right now, these are the top things that I think we need to do. Make sure that someone is not suddenly having to do two jobs. They may be struggling a little bit to get everything done. This is your opportunity to say, I'm gonna be a leader. I'm gonna help make your life easier so we can go on being successful. Do not forget to do this step, very important. Hope this has been useful for you. For more about me, go to my website, kenokel.com. If you want to send me an email about this presentation or any other questions that you have, shoot it to tvguy at kenokel.com. You may be wondering, what's up with the email? Well, when I worked in TV news, you'd often be out in the public. People would recognize you. They'd want to say hi, have a connection, but they would forget your name. So they would just yell out things like, hey, TV guy, hence the name. And I welcome you to connect with me on the social channels, especially with LinkedIn. Feel free to send me a connection request maybe mention where we came in contact with one another, like in this presentation. That can help me kind of check out your request. Sometimes I do get requests from people who just seem to want to sell me a bunch of stuff and not really value me as a personal or professional connection. Hope this session has been good. Backups, they can make or break your organization. Invest the time today. I'm Ken Oakle. Take care.